This video is sponsored by Linode. Use the link in the description to get a $100 60-day credit. More on them a little bit later. Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. Sorry for the inconsistent uploads as of recent. I'm uh, a little preoccupied here and there. But in this video, what we're going to be doing is talking about the differences between Manjaro Linux and Endeavor OS 2 of the more popular Arch-based Linux distributions. Now first, before we talk about some of the differences, we're gonna to need to talk about these similarities. And the most obvious is they are Linux distributions based on Arch. And with that, they're gonna follow the same sort of update structure. You're gonna have access to those Arch user repositories. They're both gonna have Pac-Man to help you manage your software. They're gonna include a lot of these same packages depending on the desktop environment that you go with. Uh, they're both installed with Calamaris, which is a very popular installation tool for Linux. And both of these distributions are going to have their distribution-specific tools to help you manage your system. Now that's about it when it comes to the similarities, so let's go ahead and dive into the first key difference, and that is the installation. Now I just said they both use Calamaris, which they do, but the way they go about distributing their various additions is a little bit different. If you go to the Manjaro website, you're going to have individual downloads for various distributions, including their official versions, which is XFCE, GNOME, and Plasma, and then they'll have independent downloads for all their various community editions, including things like Cinnamon and various tiling window managers. While with Endeavor OS, there's really only one Endeavor download, and when you actually boot up into the system, you're gonna be in XFCE, which is the flagship base install of Endeavor. If you want to XFCE, you could go ahead and just go with their offline installer, and that's what it's going to download and install on your system. But if you want a different desktop environment, you're gonna to want to go ahead and launch their online installer, which with this install, you are gonna get some additional options to select some of the packages that are installed, including that desktop environment, some accessibility tools, and some printer support. Obviously, you will need an internet connection for this. One of the cool things about separating it out like Manjaro is you could get a KDE image and you're not gonna need an internet connection to actually install it. But with Endeavor, you are only gonna need that one image to go ahead and get whatever you want. And Endeavor does have community versions, which is a different button in the initial dialogue launch. So you will have even more options in addition to what's available on their online installer. Now the next difference between these two different Linux distributions is gonna be the pre-included distribution specific tools that are gonna ship with these two different distros. And the most obvious one that you're gonna notice is the welcome screen or the welcome dialog that's gonna pop up the first time you boot your system. Now after you install Endeavor OS, the welcome screen is actually gonna launch you in a tab called after install. And it's gonna give you a bunch of different buttons to go ahead and select some various options that you might want to do after you install your system, such as updating it, updating the mirrors, changing your display resolutions. And of course, if you cycle through some of the other tabs, you're gonna have a lot more information and links to other resources. Now within Endeavor OS, if you go into whatever system menu for whatever desktop environment you happen to be using, you could open up their app info application. From generic applications like Yay all the way to the Endeavor OS specific little utilities that they go ahead and include for you. Now Endeavor OS really doesn't include that much and that's one of the benefits of it is it's incredibly lightweight, it's very close to Arch with just a little bit of added help and tools to get you up and running really easy. Now when you first boot up Manjaro, there is also a welcome dialogue, but it's not gonna give you as many tips and tricks as it will in Endeavor OS. You have some simple links to some additional resources and some support forms, things like that. But where Manjaro really shines is some of the other included applications. One, their Manjaro settings manager is an awesome utility to go ahead and update your locales, some of your user settings. You could go ahead and select uh, specific kernels through here, downgrade, upgrade. I personally have used this tool quite a bit. And one of the best things within this Manjaro setting manager is a actual graphical user interface to go ahead and switch between open source and proprietary drivers for something like your NVIDIA graphics cards or Wi-Fi adapters, whatever you happen to be using. Now, another huge benefit to Manjaro is PAMAC, their graphical user interface package manager. With this, you could of course manage all the packages with the official repositories, but it gives you a really clean and nice interface to manage not only your AUR applications, but it also includes support for flat packs, snap packages, and just a lot of easy to configure preferences within that menu of PAMAC. And of course, PAMAC has a CLI utility, so you could use the terminal if you do prefer. Now, 
Endeavor OS does ship with a AUR helper. It ships with Yay, which is another fantastic one. It's not as intuitive and easy to use as something like PadMac, but it integrates really well with Pacman, which is just the default regular package manager, and you can easily search the AUR, get whatever you need through it. And something that I do some of the times is within Endeavor OS, I'll open up Yay and I'll actually use that to install PadMac all which will install the entire PadMac application and all the other support and add-ons that you could get with it. Now, I haven't really done that as of recent because I've been getting more and more comfortable with just using Yay in the terminal, but it's definitely an option for you if you want to do the little bit of extra work it takes, and that's actually something that I mentioned in the things to do after you install Endeavor OS video that I did uh, a little while back. And speaking of using the terminal, you know what you can use the terminal for? you could use it to SSH into your very own instance of Linode. Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider out there, and you can use them to easily fire up a Linux server and host whatever you'd want to host that you would need a Linux server for. They have easy one-click installs for various game servers, web platforms such as Ghost or WordPress. Or of course, if you just wanna do it from scratch, you could pick between a wide variety of Linux distributions to host whatever you would like to host. They have fantastic customer support. I've been using them to host the Tech Up Forms and my main blog uh, and my Nextcloud instance. I use them for any hosting that I don't want to do locally and th they've been fantastic and I would recommend them to you. And it, again, if you use the link in the description, you get a $100 60 day credit to go ahead and try out the node today. Now with that, we're gonna get into the next difference and that is the update structure. And yes, both of these are Arch distros. They're rolling release, meaning that they don't have like specific set versions that come out every X amount of years. They're just gonna be continuously getting updates. Now with that, there is going to be a difference in the frequency of these updates. If you're on something like Endeavor, this is made to be close to Arch. So you're gonna get close to Arch when it comes to actually getting updates. Now, Manjaro has actually a couple different branches to kind of help with overall stability. If you go ahead and use their unstable branch, you're just going to get updates right away without any testing. And then they have the testing branch. And then from there, once updates have been tested, they will go over to the normal stable branch. This adds some security, but you might be waiting around an extra week or two for that new version of Caden Live or whatever you want to be using. Now with that, we're going to get into the final difference, and this is probably the least important because chances are you're going to end up ricing and configuring and installing and removing applications. That is going to be the appearance and the applications that are pre-installed on the system. First, Endeavor OS just generally isn't really themed too heavily if you install their offline version, their XFCE version. Uh, it is going to be a very beautiful purple with their wallpaper. It's going to look pretty nice, not too configured but there are definitely some things here and there. If you install any of the other desktop environments with Endeavor OS, there might be some light customization depending on the exact one. You'll have the Endeavor OS background, but overall they don't really do too much. It's your system. Even if we look at the GNOME version of Endeavor OS, all we really have is the background and literally in the bottom dock, we have our file manager and that's it. Now Manjaro does have a lot more customizations depending on the actual desktop environment you're in. Uh, an example is if you go with the Manjaro GNOME edition, you're going to get a lot of different things. Uh, one of the big ones is their layout switcher, which will allow you to easily change the overall layout of your desktop. And there's a lot of different options here to give you that Mac OS style. You could get the bottom taskbar. You could go with a full tiling window manager-esque type thing going on. That is actually really cool to play with. So Manjaro is heavily customized. If you look at their KDE, it's not nearly as much as their GNOME edition, but you still get custom theming, custom colors, the background. But of course, you're probably going to configure and change this, so this really doesn't matter too much unless if you really like the default look. Uh, me personally, I love the default look of uh, Endeavor OS, and I've actually made like you launch your themes to kind of match it with their uh, i3 look. So when it comes to the differences of how they look, it's just a matter of preference, but being that this is Linux, you can really do whatever the hell you want and everything is incredibly customizable. And then when it comes to applications, the bulk of them is just gonna depend on what desktop environment you choose. If you choose GNOME, you're gonna get GNOME disks and things like that. If you choose KDE, you're gonna get KDE Partition Manager, Dolphin, those types of applications. Manjaro will come with an Office suite and some additional applications. Endeavor OS really won't include too much past what will just ship natively with whatever desktop environment you end up going with. So 
Overall, when it comes to comparing the differences between these two, Manjaro is a little bit more bloated, but it has a lot more tools. It's uh, generally easy to use for somebody who's completely new, while Endeavor OS is a really great option if you're looking to get into Arch without having to completely waste your time with the installation process. So ultimately, it's all just based on preference. Go ahead and try out both, load them in the virtual machine, burn them on the ISO, and try the live environment. Figure out what you prefer and install it. Life is good. So with all of that said, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you to our Patreons and YouTube members. You guys are absolutely fantastic. Thank you to Linode for sponsoring this video and helping out the channel. You guys are fantastic. If you're interested, I actually have videos or a video, maybe two at this point, over on the Linode channel that you could go ahead and check out if you would like to. With all of that, download links will be below. Additional videos on the things to do after installing these various distributions will be below. I hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.